song of glory. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense.
over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. And he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Christ is risen. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Raise your joys and triumphs high. Alleluia. that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead or engraved in rock forever. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another, how my heart yearns within me. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. God indeed is my savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord. Acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. 
you will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was risen from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let us pray together. Eternal, empowering Holy One, we praise you for the promise and fresh energy the Easter story brings into our lives. We are thankful that Jesus continues to show himself to us in new ways and that we can experience his love, presence and vision for the world in our own lives and times. Gracious God, we praise and thank you for the witness of the women who went to the tomb. The Bible testifies to the fears as well as the joys and relief they experienced. We too are caught between the fears and doubts of our faith and the joy and affirmation of what we have seen and known. It is good to recognize ourselves as part of the history of your people struggling between fear of what is and has been and a desire to affirm an open and unknown future. Unexpected, moving, evolving Spirit of God you bring about powerful reversals in the world and in our lives. The mystery of your created universe is a constant reminder of the ways you create and recreate the cycles of death and new life through change and fresh beginnings. As your Easter people, we want this new life to be offered and experienced by people and situations all over our world for hope to be known and embraced. Amen. Our Easter Gospel is about the women who were at the tomb. And notice how the Gospel actually mentions three of them by name, but also suggests that they were others. The woman the same woman who had been with Jesus to the end, the woman who did not run away as the others did. So the same woman this morning went out to the tomb. Yes, the women were brave. Yes, they didn't stay behind. They took risks and now lovingly they went to Jesus' tomb. But then there were Stunned when they came to the tomb and the body wasn't there. The earliest account of what might have happened on that morning we find in Mark's Gospel, the oldest of the four Gospels in our New Testament. Mark tells us how those women were just so frightened. They ran away. Initially there was no account in Mark that they were going to the disciples and telling them what they experienced. But eventually they must have done that. Initially Mark's gospel ended just like that and later another chapter was added. Mark then 
just like the others, tells us that the women were the first ones to proclaim the good news about Jesus, the good news that he had actually told them about. But somehow they had not taken that in, that yes, he was going to die, but he would rise from the dead. It is such an extraordinary idea and is such an incomprehensible notion that someone dies but comes to new life. Even Jesus did not always seem to know what was going to happen to him, but many times he gave his disciples hints. And there is a passage in John's Gospel. It comes during the last week of Jesus' life. He had come into Jerusalem, was spending a day or two teaching the people Some people came to him trying to find out who he really is. The first thing that he tells them, because this seems to have been on his mind a lot, he tells them that the Son of Man must be handed over to the enemies and be put to death. He says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified, that is, to be put to death. Remember, Jesus was fully human, like we are, so he was undoubtedly afraid not knowing what this would mean, and knowing also what the Romans did to people whom they considered dangerous. That's when he tells the beautiful parable that we so often use when we try to talk about death and life after death. It's a very simple and brief parable. Truly, I say to you, unless the grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Jesus is talking about himself. When he is buried in the ground like the seed and dies, then he can break forth into new life, be raised from the dead, and share that life with all of us. That's the first and most joyful message of Easter, that Jesus has indeed broken through the barrier of death to new life, and where he has gone, we will follow, go through death to new life as he did. This is the great joy of Easter, the great promise of Easter, that each of us, when we die, will be like the seed that breaks forth into new life. But in addition to being about life after death, resurrection is also about what happens to us right now. And that's where St. Paul's letter to the Romans is so important. Those among us who have been baptized probably weren't baptized fully immersed into water like the earliest Christians. But that's what Paul is talking about when he tells the church in Rome, Don't you know that in baptism, which unites us to Christ, we were all baptized and plunged into death? That's what happens at our baptism. We are plunged into the death of Jesus buried in that water of baptism. By this baptism and his death, we were buried with him, Paul continues. And as Jesus was raised from among the dead by the glory of God, so we begin living in a new life. It is right now, not just when we die, that we share in the risen life of Christ. It is right now, through our baptism, that we become alive with the life of Jesus That carries with it a responsibility, and I'm sure that we all recognize what that means. We are alive in Jesus. Jesus lives in us, in each one of us. We are the ones who are called to carry on the work of Jesus. When Jesus called us, he also called us to act according to his ways. He called us to listen faithfully to the word of God proclaimed by him, by how he lived, and by what he said. In this work of listening to God's voice, of being Christ's hand and feet and voices and back, we are not alone. God gives us a vision of new life, of life in him, and that vision is embodied in the life and death and new life of Jesus the Christ. Amen.
Listen to God's promise. Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters and great trouble, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be harmed. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And may the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. May God's new life grow within you. May you look to Jesus, to his life and death and resurrection for guidance in all that you say and do. Amen. Let us affirm together, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Come.